Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to Wide World of Tanks, where we get to experience the thrill of victory and the agony of defeat. How you doing, everyone? Welcome back. I hope you're having an absolutely fantastic day. Isn't that why we love this game? Isn't that why we are all addicted to this game? Is the thrill of victory and the agony of defeat? That's why we watch sports. That's why people gamble. Not me. I didn't say we gamble because we don't all gamble. But that's why some people gamble and they get addicted to gambling. It's the thrill of victory and the agony of defeat. We're going to watch this. It's a Tetro 17 from the Soki clan. Shout out to you guys. In his 114 SP2. Tier 10. TD. Oh, it looks beautiful. Contro Caro. That's the Contro Caro, right? That doesn't matter. A little bit of a discussion here on wh why are we addicted to this game? Why do we keep watching this game? Why do we keep playing this game? With all the bad stuff that's in the game. With all the good stuff that's in the game. Some of the bad stuff that we complain about. The, the, not, I shouldn't say bad. Some of the stuff that we complain about in the game is responsible the very reason that we are addicted it is it's the human condition it's the human condition <laughs> did you see that that was oh, wait a minute is this the chinese td i don't even know which one this is yeah this is the chinese this isn't the car. Did, did you see these two shots forget about what tank this is okay because you don't even know what tank you're talking about who cares? <clears throat> that's not the point. Those two shots that we just witnessed, that's why we're addicted to the game. The first shot, he pulls up to this ridge line, he goes like a snap, boom, it hits. The next shot, he sees another target, he kind of aims, 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 shoots, oh, it misses. Right? The thrill of victory, the agony of defeat. It's the human condition. And uh, in this game, it's programmed into the game, we call it RNG. It's the variable outcomes. To some, sometimes the extreme, ridiculous, uh, you know, you're on the move, uh, going over a rock, your tank's leaping through the air, you wave your turret to the right and you click the mouse button and zoom, your shot hits that enemy on a ridge line 400 meters away, lights him on fire, he burns, his ammo rack lit, lights on fire and his turret flies off and you laugh, ha 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 ha, right? Meanwhile, that guy was watching you drive through the open ground like a Muppet and he was in his STB-1, only a top pixel of his turret showing and he aimed, 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 he led your shot, aimed, aimed, and he hit you square in the side. And the game said, critical hit. And he's going, Argh! you are experiencing the thrill of victory <laughs> and he's experiencing the agony of defeat. In, and I don't mean that in winning the game, losing the game. I'm talking about the euphoria of something great happening and the utter just rage of getting trolled. And some of us say, boy, they should really remove some of this. There's too much RNG. Plus or minus 25% is too much RNG on damage. It's too much RNG on uh, penetration values of your gun. Shots deviate, they hit the ground. When you aim and you do everything perfectly and you flank and you're only 100 meters away and that aim circle's this big, your shot shouldn't go down to the... You did everything right and you got trolled. There's too much RNG. That's common complaint. And I propose to you that, that if they removed RNG, if every shot hit bullseye and every shot from this gun did 522 damage, and every time you hit uh, a tank, it penetrated. If they removed all those wild variables, it would be boring. And after a little while, it would be like playing some, you know, some of those games that are boring, where they're just repetitive. You just have to do these things, and then you win. They get boring, and there's no... The key here, I'm going to throw this term out at you. Not out. <laughs> I'm not going to throw the term out at you. I'm going to throw the term at you. It's called dynamic range. 
highs and lows. Activities that have a large dynamic range affect humans in a way that it it actually triggers some chemical reactions within our brains to feel emotions that stir us from the the height of euphoria to the depths of rage that we seek it, it, there's such a dynamic range there that when you equate those highs and lows that dynamic range you just are addicted to to trying to achieve that euphoria okay? and uh, many many activities and games rely on this dynamic range response from humans to uh, to make money and, and to be popular and, and, and that's why people play golf right that's why so many people play golf uh, probably one in a thousand people that plays golf is good at golf right? 999 out of 100 people that play golf suck at golf they, they could hit the ball if their life life depended on it they're slicing into the woods shanking into the water dribbling into the sand trap you know the three wedging up in the air the ball goes straight up hits them on the head on the way down it's, it's ridiculous right why do people play golf you know why because uh four weeks ago when the guy that plays that's addicted to golf was out with his buddies and he had just played uh, the past seven rounds he played he sucked he was so bad you know he's, he's in the sand trap he just has to hit it over there uh, onto the green and he goes like this and he slices it and, and it lands in the in the lake right beside the and he's ah, and he throws his he throws his club into the water fucking game fuck you right like Happy Gilmore, why don't you go in the hole? Furious? Well, just the other day, he was with his buddies, and he was on a par three, and they were all standing there, and they said, okay, Billy, it's your shot. And he stood up there at 190 yards, and he got ready, and he, he accidentally took his seven uh, iron. He usually uses his nine and misses, but he... Got his seven. It is. And he felt when the ball, when his club hit the ball, he didn't feel the the usual boom, you know, because the club hit the ground. It didn't vibrate in his hand and hurt his wrists. On that particular shot, when the club hit the ball, all he heard was it's almost like he hit nothing. And he followed through. And for a minute he lost her and he looked up and then he saw a white ball in the blue sky going up, 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 down, 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 and it landed. He was confused because it landed in line with, with the, the flag and he saw it bounce once, twice, three bounces, and then boop, it disappeared. It's in the hole! It's in the hole. He fluked a hole in one. All his buddies were in awe. They're patting him on the back. Oh man, yeah, that was good. fantastic. Didn't matter what he did the rest of the game. When they went to the clubhouse after the game, he's buying drinks for everyone because that's what you have to do. I got a hole in one. I got to buy the hole. Everyone, the rounds on me. He's the happiest guy in the world. He's just and because of that shot. He's addicted to golf, no matter how much he sucks. And he will suck every game. For, and he's on fire! He's on fire! He's in the hole! Oh, wait a minute. No, no. The agony of defeat. In one other game, can you perform better than all of your teammates? Ten times better. Do 9,499 damage and emerge from this battle losing credits and raging at your teammates. Ready to uninstall and throw your computer out the window. That's why people play golf. Because that one good shot that comes around rarely is gives you such a euphoric boost that it compensates for all the shit that happens.
and you get to be outside and there's birds and grass, right? That's why people gamble in Las Vegas, right? Because no matter how many times they're beat badly, that one time, you can be playing Texas Hold'em and you could, you could have ace, ace. And the, the betting goes around and you say, oh, I got ace, ace. I raise 1,000 and everyone says, fold, 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 fold. And then one guy, one guy looks at you and says, eh, I'll call your 1,000. You say, oh, I got him. Got ace, ace, ace. And the flop comes down 279. And you, <laughs> and you raise him. 5,000. The guy hesitates a little bit. He looks at you and he goes, okay, I, I'll call. And he calls you. And you go, oh, he called me. What does he have? Flop comes down. The next card that comes down is an ace. You go, fuck. I've got three aces. Okay, I've got him. You raise another 10,000. He goes, uh, after a, a, about a minute of waiting, he calls. You go, okay. He's called. Um, all in. He calls you. He's all in as well. You, what could he possibly have? I have three aces. The flop came down two, seven, nine, ace. What does he have? He has two, seven. He's got a two pair of twos and a pair of sevens. But you got a beat because you got three aces. Ha ha ha, I got him. What's the last card? Dealer comes out like this, he goes, and the last card is a seven. <laughs> he wins with the full house. He's the... That was the hand of his life. He's going to be talking about that hand for the next 20 years. I remember when I was at that tournament in Vegas. I had 2-7. That guy was trying. I thought he was bluffing. So I called him. Prick had two aces. But I got him. He's you for The guy that lost with two aces. Now remember, when you two aces pre-flop, you've got what a versus 2-7. You've got a 96% versus 4% chance of. That's the odds. The guy with the two aces has a 96% chance of it. Something like that. You guys can check it. It's in the 90s. That guy with the two aces is getting up. Remember, he's eliminated from the tournament. He went all in. He's throwing his chair. He's kicking the table. There's security guards grabbing him. Mr. Kellerman, get, you have, get up. Mr. Kellerman, calm down, right? They cut him off. No more drinks for him. That's why people gamble. Because of, if you've never tried it, don't. Because you could get addicted. And even if they're not playing for a lot of money, even if they're only playing for like uh, two bucks, you know, you get to some of these Vegas tournaments, you can uh, buy into a Texas Hold'em tournament for 10 bucks. And you could play for hours. So it's fun, right? You don't have to be a high stakes, lose your shirt uh, player. You, you could play a tournament and enter for 10, 20 bucks. So it's not even a lot of money. But the adrenaline and the euphoria and the rage, even if you're only playing for five, ten bucks, is mesmerizing. And that's why they're addicted. And, and that's why... Look at... And that's why we play this game. The guy just missed. He bounced and missed. And he's furious. He's going, fuck! Right? He's just absolutely furious that he missed those two shots. So it's the dynamic range, guys. That's what keeps us addicted. Uh, the bullshit at the bottom and the magic at the top. If there was no dynamic range, if it was just like meh in the... You know, like some people say, why don't you... If you're tired of RNG, tar try War Thunder or what's the other one or there's <laughs> don't need to aim because sometimes Yodi says yes some of those games get boring because the outcome is predictable I, I've mentioned this on stream before but if you don't watch my stream I'll tell the little story the, the first game that really capitalized on this um, well uh, gambling is one of the first ones Boom. <laughs> but look at this. The guy's freaking out. Now he's going, fuck, are you kidding me? Fire, I'm on fire. Are you stupid, game? Rage? And this, Gignafaska Auskuscheisen, Euphoria? Rage. That's the dynamic range right there. So gambling was one of the first ones. But what? one of the first games that made a lot of money, a simple game for kids that 
relies on the same thing and I think they didn't even know that this was the case they just made the game and it, uh, why is the game so popular and that's Monopoly you ever played Monopoly the, you know the game you roll the dice and then you go around the board you land on the railroad all by that and at the beginning it's all just chance you land on something, you buy it. And the next guy goes, he, la he lands on an electric company, has to buy an electric company. You land on Boardwalk, you watch Board, you buy Boardwalk. <laughs> you keep going around and around. And the, the next guy, he's coming around, he says, oh, I'm going to buy Park Place. But he rolls a six and he, oh, go to jail. Go directly to jail. Do not pass go. <laughs> he has to go to jail. You land on, oh, I got Park Place. You got a set. You just luckily get... Uh, uh, one or two sets at the beginning of the game just through chance because you're rolling the dice you have to land on the three yellow properties and you buy them well then the game's over right you're winning the game's over because now slowly you're going to put houses and hotels on your saint james place or whatever you own right and you have a set and the other guys do the guy you're playing against doesn't so there's no way he's going to win the player that starts winning at the beginning, the player that gets a set or two, uh, simply wins slowly. The outcome is already determined. Similar to this game in a lot of games. Once you start winning, you snowball to victory, right? But you keep playing to the end. <laughs> so in Monopoly, uh, at the beginning, the first 15, 20 minutes of the game, when you're just going around trying to buy up properties, if you don't get a set, if you just land on the wrong places and you don't get a set, you're going to lose. And then you just sit there and you land, you go around and you land on uh, the yellow guy. He has a hotel there and he says, oh, that'll be, you landed on my hotel. That'll be $1,363. <laughs> you give it to him. And then he comes around and he lands on electric company. You, only, you don't have a set. You just got electric company. And you say, yeah, that, you landed on an electric company, that'll be $25. <laughs> and he laughs and he gives you $25. And you keep playing until you land on his properties and lose all your money. <laughs> so the guy that starts winning in the first 15 minutes, because the game, Monopoly, can, you can play for like three, four hours, right? For it to finally resolve itself. But the guy who starts winning in the first... 10 15 minutes who who gets a set uh, or a couple of key sets of properties uh that guy's gonna win and he's laughing and happy the whole game everyone else is like fucking game let's make a deal It'll, let's pool our money together if i land on uh, and you, you're trying you have no hope why do people play that game it's the same every time in the first 10 minutes, if you don't get a set of properties, you lose and you have a miserable game. But why do we keep, why do the people keep playing it? Why is it so popular? Because if you're the guy that lands on Boardwalk and Park Place in the first five minutes and you buy them and you get a set and you put houses and hotels on there, then you're laughing hysterically because you know you're going to win. And eventually someone's going to land on there and you're going to be laughing. Ha, 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 ha. And they're going to be like, rah, rah. euphoria and despair. The thrill of victory, the agony of defeat. It's such an unbalanced game that's uh, completely determined. Monopoly I'm, t Monopoly, I'm still talking about. That's completely determined by RNG in the first uh, 10, 15 minutes of the game. When you roll the dice to see what you land on in the first first four or five times around the board. Boop! <laughs> first four or five times around the board, it's just RNG. By fluke, what do you land on? That determines the whole outcome of the game. <laughs> There's no skill. <laughs> and, and people play because they want, maybe I'll get the set. Maybe, maybe I'll be the guy that has all the, the hotels and the land. And when they land on Park Place, I'll be the guy that's laughing hysterically, right? That's one of the first games that uh, captured that dynamic range of euphoria and, and rage in a board game. <laughs>
that's sold for like twelve dollars that millions of people bought for their kids. I, I used to have fights with my uh, friends when we were playing. You cheated! No, you rolled a six. You didn't land on park place. You land up. Go back to jail. No, I was a seven. No, that the dice fell on the ground because it was so. That one dice roll determined the game. It's like World of Tanks. It's, it's you get bad RNG at the beginning of the game. <laughs> you know you're gonna lose. You're miserable. You get some good RNG at the beginning of the game. You go, hey! and that's why we're addicted. The Klaus Kellerman explanation for why this game is so successful and why we're addicted. Uh, it has very little to do with all the details. You know, it's a good game. It's got good graphics. It's got a good uh, uh, premise. It's got tanks. People like tanks. That kind of stuff. <laughs> He's laughing right now. It's got all the, the ingredients, right? But it has very little to do with, um, with all the minor details. Uh, the main reason that it's so addictive, and I think Wargaming knows this. If they don't, maybe, you know... They did it actually. Is the dynamic range. It's the rage and. He's loading an HE shell. Give him a ram first, yes. Fourteen! Oh, he left the man! Oh! 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 No! No! Ram him! Ram him! Ram! No! 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 The euphoria! This is what I'm talking about. The thrill of victory! The oh, I'm stunned! The thrill! The thrill of victory! The thrill of victory! Yes! Yes! And and. And the agony of defeat. And that's why we're addicted to World of Tanks. Defeat, buddy. Hard bro scoob. <laughs> you tried your best. You did almost 11,000 damage and you lost. But you'll be playing again. I know. I know you're addicted. You're going to keep playing. Thanks for watching, guys. I hope you enjoyed the video. Subscribe to the channel, help the channel grow, and I will catch you guys, because you're addicted, on the next one.